Hello everybody, I'm Pastor Todd and I'm here today with the Daily Devotion. So glad you're joining me. We had some tef technical difficulty um, just a little bit ago uh, with reception and so forth, but now it looks like it's letting me in. So glad you're joining me today. Hey, we've got a big game coming up on Sunday. Go Chiefs, right? Hi Rosie and Harry. This is going to be fun. The Super Bowl. We're going to be back in it again this year and we're going to get a victory. So it'll be exciting. Hope you're all enjoying yourselves today. Hi, Chris. Others are joining now and others will come on later. As I was saying, there was a little technical difficulty and glad we got things worked out. Hi, Carol and Bernadine. You guys are here as well today. Well, today, well, what we've been doing as pastors, we've been going through the different spiritual disciplines. And today, hi Bill and Sally, I'm going to be talking about the spiritual discipline of simplicity. And some of you know about this discipline, others it may be a relatively, um, one you maybe heard of, you haven't done much with it. So we'll just kind of unpack it a little bit today. First I want to start with the definition. Hi Charlene and Harry. Um, simplicity one definition that I liked sets us free to receive the provision of God as a gift that is not ours to keep and can be freely shared with others. And I just love the couple scripture verses. I mean, there's several that they tie to this spiritual discipline, but one that I really appreciate is Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. It says, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am in. I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I'm in. I don't know if that is you. I can say that's not me. I'm not content in all circumstances or whatever circumstances. I'm still learning and growing in that, but trying to live into that. This spiritual discipline helps us get there, that we can be content no matter what we've got provisions, no matter what we've got in terms of our circumstances. And so, um, the second one I want to share is Matthew 6.33. It says, But seek first his kingdom <clears throat> and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And this discipline really helps us get our priorities straight. Hi, Jane, out in Kenya. <laughs> this is great that you're joining. I know Jane um, from mission trips out there. So this is great. Glad you're here. That's a long ways away. Anyway, um, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And I think it's just, this spiritual discipline helps us get things in priority order. You know, uh, God and his kingdom first and our needs and so forth being met. Um, you know, he meets our spiritual needs, he meets our physical needs, but this helps us prioritize our lives, sort through what our needs are, what our wants are, really making sure he's at the top of the list, God is. In terms of our priorities and not just him but his ways and the way he wants us to live at the top okay so why incorporate simplicity into your life simplicity is freedom from the from worldly values and it brings joy and balance and kind of on the flip side of that is hoarding hoarding is bondage to worldly values that brings fear of loss and anxiety that I don't have enough and this discipline requires us to differentiate between our needs and our wants. And when God meets my needs, I will take any excess from his gift of meeting my needs. And I'm going to be willing to give that to others to help them. And I think too often we focus on our wants. And they're really not needs, but they become a need because we spend so much time focusing on our wants that it becomes a need. Simplicity is an ongoing exercise of the mind and the heart that prevents one from getting caught up in the things of the world. It's an inward reality that presents itself in an outward lifestyle. The spiritual discipline of simplicity provides perspective on life and sets us free to receive the provision of God as a gift. It's not a right, it's a gift from God. It sets us free to share with others in a way that blesses both the giver and the receiver. Hi, Daniel and Jim. Others are here as well. Okay, so how do we go about incorporating simplicity as a discipline into your life? Now, we could go on all day about this, but I'm just going to share a couple things. Hi, Pam. Um, 
a couple different thoughts with you a couple different ways. The first thing I want to start off is I think we, how we incorporate this discipline in our life, we need to be satisfied with less and give away what we really don't need. And so maybe you look at your clothes in your closet um, and you go, oh my goodness, and I can speak for myself here. There are things in there that I haven't worn for the for quite a while and I don't probably plan on that I will wear them. You know what I mean? I just haven't taken the time to sort through them. Okay, so why am I holding on to this gift that God's given me? Can I pass this on to someone else who maybe could use these and put them to need? Or maybe your money. You know, you have savings. Uh, maybe you're close to retirement and you've got your pension and everything else. And you look and you go, oh my goodness, my needs are met. God has provided. I have excess. No, none of us want to admit we have excess money, but do we? Are our needs met? Is there some margin there with our money that we could give away to some people that have less and really be a blessing to them? Um, how about our food? You know, I think food is good, but does one need to spend hundreds of dollars on a meal? Or would a modest meal be better and then give the surplus dollars away and bless someone? Hi, Mason. Glad you're here as well. Um, maybe a third area or a fourth area we could look at. We looked at clothes, money, food, maybe our car that we drive. Um, you drive a Honda when you could afford, drive a Honda instead of driving a higher end car. And just, it really simplicity puts us more in touch with others um, who have less and it's a way for us to be a blessing to them. So we need to reevaluate our lives to ascertain what I really need and then relegate my, our wants to a second tier that we occasionally visit. Simplicity doesn't involve overindulgence. It roots out the human tendency toward greed and toward covetousness, doesn't it? Simplicity doesn't necessarily mean we live in want. It means we learn to be satisfied and fulfilled by a simpler life. And with simplicity, we demonstrate that we do not follow what the world values. And we truly stand out as countercultural influence, you know, following God and his ways and what he wants for us. So I say all these things, you know, it's easy to talk about. It's another thing to implement. So how does one go about making a step with your clothes or with your food or with your finances or maybe with your car? How do you take those steps? Well, I, just want to encourage you, I think, if you say today, hey, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get in shape. You don't just wake up the next day and say, okay, well, I'm going to go run a half marathon. We're going to get that body whipped into shape quick. No. Things too fast in training, you're going to hurt yourself. So you have to go slow. It's baby steps, one little step at a time. And so maybe with your money, you could start with just a little bit and say, hey, you and I could say, hey, I do have some excess. I wonder if I give this much. This is a gift from God. He's met my needs. This is a little bit of an excess. I wonder if I give this away to someone in need, someone that has less, and God can maybe meet the need through my generosity. I can be a blessing to that person, and that person can be blessed. So I think we just have to start somewhere and then let God show us and encourage us with this Holy Spirit. And maybe we'll find, ah, that isn't the best thing to do. Maybe it's something else that I have that's in excess. So I just want to encourage you to take a step. I'm going to. I hope you will too with your possessions you have, with your finances that you have, even with your time. Now, some of us are really hyper with our schedules. You know, is there margin where we could give some of our time serving someone else? We need to be willing to do that too and really follow what God wants for us. Remember, our time, our money, our possessions, these are all gifts from God. Nothing that we deserve, these God has blessed us with and he wants us to get our needs met and then he wants us to share the excess with others to meet their needs too. All right, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this concept of simplicity and Lord, Many of us, we just kind of keep plowing from day to day and we don't really sit back and think what God is doing. He's given us a lot. Um, and maybe we don't think we have a lot, but when we look at the world, we do have a lot. Lord, just show us what step we can take with our possessions, with our time, with our money. Lord, to really um, see it as a gift from you, Lord see the excess in there sorting through our need and our want and really saying that is a need and this is a want maybe with the excess that we have because our needs are met 
we'd be willing to part with some and you'll show us who to take it to and how much and when. And Lord, that we would continue just to follow your leading in this area to the point where we really are living a life that's centered around you and that's um, really living into this discipline of simplicity. Lord, lead and guide us to that end. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today, those that were here live. I'm looking forward to many others watching this later in the day, later in the week too. Um, if this has been helpful, you with other people. Well, I will be back with you next Thursday at 10 o'clock, sharing another spiritual discipline with you. And tomorrow morning, I want you to tune in at 10 o'clock. Tune in at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live, and Pastor Bob's going to share yet another spiritual discipline with you. Have a great day. May God bless you.